Well, good morning. Uh, it's good that uh, finally the vaccine is there and it uh, has to be rolled out. Uh, of course, uh, over 18 months, it can be rolled out over a day. Preferably, it should have been done that way uh, so that uh, you get as many people as uh, possible vaccinated within the shortest possible time uh, in order to secure the health of everyone and uh, achieve both biological and uh, social justice. Uh, the census data does not uh, direct you to the individual who has to be vaccinated, but rather provides you a logistical template of how you could proceed with the work. And if you allowed me to share the screen, uh, one could demonstrate how that could uh, happen. Uh, because uh, in fact, uh, Stats SA has done some good work more recently uh, where they show vulnerability it is a vulnerability map uh, based on the uh, 100,000 or 120,000 parcels of land that were used for mapping out South Africa in order to execute a function such as the census. You could approach a vaccination by way of going house to house or using um, a, a, a a method where everybody comes to a particular center to be vaccinated. Obviously, that causes you trouble in terms of super transmitters. Yeah. You could use either the 14,000 areas of voting districts or 22,000 voting districts that are in South Africa and people assemble there or the assembly method. Both ways would work. The difficulty though is uh, how do you notify people? Therefore the assembly method uh, almost uh, works well, or you could use uh, clinics as uh, centers uh, for vaccination, but the census template gives you the workload, uh, how many people you can expect uh, to be there by looking at uh, what we call enumeration areas, which are clusters of uh, 150 households, uh, given that the average household size is 3.3, uh, you are looking at about 500, 500 people per EA, and then you can aggregate them whichever way you want to aggregate them contiguously uh, to give you a cluster that is amenable for vaccination. Mm. So those are the two methods of assembly or house to house. And then we could uh, execute that uh, rolling out a number of people. I do not know whether uh, uh, vaccination ex is exclusively something that is run by nurses or you could train a new set of people because uh, the nurses to run vaccination when they have uh, all other work uh, that they do every day, you may need to actually train a new set of people. And in my estimation, the military would be the best people to do this because they have the logistics, because this is a, 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 an act uh, in logistics, uh, uh, executing in terms of forward logistics, the military would be uh, your best, they have the tracks, they have the discipline, uh, and uh, you could train them within a short space of time, whatever time, but you've got a captive um, instrument that can actually vaccinate much faster uh, if this does not uh, require that uh, uh, the, the, the nurses are the exclusive people. Uh, that have to vaccinate. Uh, okay, because that's what I was about to ask you. I mean, how involved would the military be in this? Uh, especially because we know that the military's relationship with some communities in the country as things stand is actually not the best. I'm thinking about, for instance, Alexander Township, where we saw uh, a, a situation where his, uh, his name escapes me. One of the people in Alex who, you know, sadly lost his life at the hands, allegedly, of the military itself. So how involved with the military, if this is the most viable solution, you think, be involved in that uh, vaccination rollout? Well, I suppose uh, instances of this nature that are very unfortunate and uncalled for happen and loss of life happens. I suppose uh, they, they, they taint the military and uh, the fact that uh, there have been uh, assertions that uh, uh, the military was not guilty in a court of justice of the military itself. Uh, doesn't augur well to give a military uh, any shade of uh, respectability. But I, I think uh, in a crisis such as this one, we'll remember that instance. Uh, but I think uh, the military is the most well-placed uh, to roll out much faster uh, this particular operation. 18 months um, is quite long. I'm not sure what drives 18 months. Is it because 
uh, the vaccines will arrive such that we will need 18 months for them to come? Or is it a, a matter of the workforce to get people vaccinated? It is a matter of workforce to get people vaccinated. I'm sure the military would do this uh, within a short space of time. There are 100,000 patches uh, in South Africa. You can aggregate them into 22,000 voting districts uh, and then uh, uh, go call as many people as are possible to undertake the train as many people as are possible to undertake this task, uh, given factors of safety, both of the vaccines and the individuals that have to come there and vaccinate as quickly as possible and get uh, 40 million South Africans all vaccinated in short, within a very short space of time. Mm. And in that respect, the military is a logistical uh, infrastructure that uh, qualifies for this the best. From a training point of view, from a discipline point of view, minus the people that died during a uh, COVID level five uh, lockdown. And we'll speak about that in just a moment. I'm told you are able to share your screen with us if you still want to do that so that we can follow some of the trends you've alluded to uh, at the start of our conversation. Part of why I asked about the relationship... Uh, I'm still, I'm still uh, unable. Still struggling, okay. Um, my colleagues are listening in. They'll try to yeah. get that sorted out for us. Hopefully we can before we have to mm -hmm. wrap up. But part of the, the reason why I asked about the relationship between the military and some communities is because uh, government is facing a multiplicity of challenges. One of them is buy-in. You know, the people who need to be the face of the administration of these vaccines need to be trustworthy. And I know that's an elusive concept, but if there are glaring, call it question marks between certain communities and, you know, the personnel that have to distribute and administer this type of thing, it, it might add unnecessary complexity to a process that I'm sure will agree needs to be extremely expedited because it is a race against time. Yes, indeed. I think uh, the president uh, uh, and the minister of health did some good thing that uh, they were the first to be uh, vaccinated. So I th in that respect, everybody was watching how they got uh, vaccinated. Uh, of course, there were concerns around uh, why is the nurse not uh, wearing protective uh, clothing? She had a mask, but uh, you, she needed that gloves and all that. Uh, I think uh, that's not how to do it. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I think uh, that gesture that they put forward, and I'm sure Sikha Sigalala and uh, his health MEC will be uh, vaccinated, therefore giving credibility to the fact that uh, all of us must be vaccinated uh, and we must get everybody vaccinated because uh, we cannot, in the absence, where if one or a few of us are not vaccinated, we are a risk to the rest of the country. And therefore we all have to be vaccinated. Yes, you are asking the question whether the military had the right face, uh, given that, uh, or, or given what happened or, uh, during lockdown level five. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a concern, it's a matter of concern, it's regretted, uh, but generally the military, certainly in terms of logistics and in terms of discipline, are the best placed people to undertake this. And I suppose uh, with the right not public relations uh, exercise, not spin, not smoke and mirrors and lies, but uh, through very, very clear, transparent communication with the public, uh, they would do a fantastic job. Sure. All right. Uh, that's all the time we have. Thanks so much for your insights. Really uh, important food for thought. I wonder the fact that we haven't had a census in a couple of years, how much that would influence how many people would actually need to be watching. But I guess that's a conversation for another time. Thanks very much for coming through. Uh, Dr. Uh, Padili Hotla is the former Statistician General in South Africa.